Hey guys, thanks for watching another movie review here at Cinematics. I'm your host, Jordan Ross, and today I'm reviewing Blade Runner 2049. Now, this film isn't turning any heads at the box office, but honestly, I could care less about that. The original didn't do well in the box office either, but now it's a beloved classic. It's one of the most influential, visually stunning, and groundbreaking films ever made. And not just in the sci-fi genre. I'm talking about movies in general. And having said all of that, Blade Runner 2049 is even better. You heard me right. Denis Villeneuve has done the impossible. He was able to strike that delicate balance of making a film that feels like a true continuation of the original, while also making it feel like a Denis Villeneuve film. Villeneuve might just be the most exciting director working today, and I believe when it's all said and done, he'll be considered one of the greatest directors of all time. Right up there with Spielberg and Kubrick and Hitchcock. I mean, that's how good he is. And I've actually been a fan of his for a while now. The first film I saw of his was in Cindy's, and since then, I've followed his career really closely. So it's really cool for me to see him break out and get such wide recognition and receive all of these huge opportunities. And with the planned Dune remake coming up, and potentially directing the historical epic Cleopatra, Villeneuve's legend will only continue to grow. However, he's not the only legend that worked on Blade Runner 2049. Richard Deakins, one of the greatest cinematographers of all time, worked on this film too. And it shows too, because this is one of the most visually stunning and jaw-dropping films I've ever seen. And I mean that literally, because I can't even count the number of times that I was sitting in the theater with my mouth wide open because I was in such awe at what I was witnessing on the screen. Now, Deakins has been nominated for a whopping 13 Oscars, but he's never won. That's an absolute crime. 13 nominations and zero wins. And he's been the guy behind the camera for some of the most beautifully shot films ever made. And I'll be shocked if he doesn't get his 14th Oscar nomination for Blade Runner 2049. However, I'll be even more shocked if he doesn't take home the gold this time. As great as his past work was, this movie is his crown jewel. In fact, I predicted back in May that he'd win his first Oscar for this film, so I'm really hoping that prediction comes true. Anyway, this film isn't just a visual spectacle. I mean, yes, technically speaking, it's a masterpiece, and it's worth seeing for that reason alone. However, it's also much more than that. Narratively speaking, it's one of the most faithful and satisfying sequels ever made, which is incredible considering how big of a gap there was between these two films. None of it was forced, and it didn't rely on nostalgia to keep the audience invested. It drew from certain aspects of the original and built on them in an organic way. This wasn't one of those unnecessary sequels that was only made for the purpose of making a ton of money. It felt like a movie that needed and deserved to be told. Also, as a father, I really like how Villeneuve frequently explores complex relationships between parents and their children, which is something he does yet again in this. Meanwhile, all of the performances were top-notch, which isn't surprising considering the great cast that Villeneuve put together. Ryan Gosling is such a subtle actor, and he's able to convey so many complex emotions without overacting, and that's more apparent than ever in this film. In fact, I'd go as far as saying that he gives one of the best performances of his career, which is really saying something, because he's been been one of the best actors around for a while. As for Harrison Ford, I feel like this movie had just the right amount of Deckard in it. Like the film itself, Deckard's appearance wasn't just fan service. It was organic and plausible, and it wasn't distracting. Other standouts include Robin Wright as Gosling's no-nonsense police chief. That's what we do here. And Ana de Armas as one of the most fascinating and unique portrayals that I've ever seen of an artificial intelligence character. I always told you. You're special. Even the usually obnoxious Jared Leto was great in this. Now, some people might be scared off by its nearly three-hour runtime, but its massive scope and epic story warrant that amount of time, and it really doesn't feel that long either. Anyway, this is one of the best films of the year, if not the best. It's a powerful, existential, and surprisingly emotional follow-up to one of the greatest sci-fi films ever made. This is going to go down as one of the best sequels of all time. So, I give Blade Runner 2049 9 out of 10 stars. Do not wait for this film to come Come out on video. This is a movie that deserves to be experienced for the first time in a movie theater. Anyway, what did you think of Blade Runner 2049? What did you think of my review? Let me know in the comment section. Also, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe to my channel, and follow me on all of my social media accounts, which you can find in the description section below. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, I'm your host, Jordan Ross.